All right, everybody, it's time. Time for the feedback loop. Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. Um, got a got a fairly light load this morning. Um, I do want to call uh, special attention to uh, the general channel. Um, we've got submissions from uh, Luigi, which I largely answered in line last night. Um, some so many of these projects, if it's if it's something where you submit it. And I can answer it right, right away. I, I just like to an, answer it in line. Um, we're looking for um, for more from um, our other teams as well. Uh, like Megan, you're, I know you're just getting started, so you'll get a lot of this in line feedback. Um, but Luigi was nice enough to share with us uh, some of the some of the projects uh, that he's researching uh, at as his team at um, his COVID team is building out project and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so we can take a look at this the, so COVID Act now uh, this project um, gives you a, a look into kind of where the hot spots are nationwide where the um, um, we're, we're, we're doing well where we're not doing so well. As you can see, we're, where I'm at, we're not doing so hot here. Um, what's interesting is the, the preview for this site um, gives us a look at county by county level. And uh, I'm not seeing that here. I, I do know that we can go in and click into and, and look at the state level. And you can kind of see, like, for Illinois, everything's, like, right here in my corner, which is great for me. Not really. Um, but if we, you know, let's zoom, zoom back out. Let's go over to New York. You know, New York is uh, roughly stabilizing, and, and that's great. That's great for, uh, you know, Kara and Luigi. Um, let's take a trip down to Florida and see how things are doing for Lisa and Tejel and um, you know roughly stable looks like things are getting a little hot over there near St. Pete and, and I think that's Daytona I cannot tell to be completely honest with you um, you know we go out to the west coast check on check on Katie and uh, it looks like Looks like San Jose or San Mateo County up here, which is near San Francisco. That's not a great zone. Um, let's go up here to James. You know what? I gotta be honest with you. I'm super happy to see see this. Yeah, I know King County is still kind of a bit of a you know, a bit of a mess. That's where Seattle is. But you know, aside from this little area down here, looks like Washington's like coming up out of this largely. Um, Looking forward to seeing some green there. Um, but overall, overall, you get a sense of how things are, are really going. That number that we see so often, uh, you know, you get over here on this this uh, side over here. Um, the number, the big number will freak you out. You know, the big number where it says, you know, 100,000 or 200 million or what is it now? Is it two million cases and a million of them are in the United States? Um, three million cases. So one third of all cases in the United States are in the United oh, States. One third of the cases in the world are in the United States. But the perception here versus the perception over on the COVID, the other COVID site, it's a little different. Here it's just, gosh, it's all bad. There it's like, well, there are spots that are improving. And that, that, the big lesson here is how data, the same data, can be displayed to tell two different stories, okay? Um, and I, th I think we're at that point where telling a different story is probably a good idea. Uh, we're starting to see just a little bit of movement in our, in our trend line. You can see that it just kind of barely nudging down. We'll see if that continues. Um, but the larger focus here is Luigi has been doing ample amounts of like went through like 10 different COVID projects kind of looking at dashboards like this Hopkins one and getting a sense of um, getting a sense of 
what's out there for people to use. And because um, as they're they're building a, a as they are building a um, a dashboard of sorts, they they want to bring in the things that are working and leave out the things that aren't. And I think um, I think Luigi, I think you you and your team are doing a really good job um, focusing on what's working. Um, another thing that I, I, I'd like to point out is I think Luigi's um, by adopting the the journaling you immediately are adding documentation to the process and what you'll hear is that oh wow documentation gosh I wish we had somebody on our team who would do that for us because documentation is a job that nobody really wants to do but everybody needs it so if you're looking for you know that it sounds like grunt work until it sounds like grunt work until you have to go back and kick off a new wave of the project or you have to you have to install um, like any anytime you if we go over to github real quick um, I'll just I'll just look for any sort of react project um, so I'll just go to this bees with machine guns thing okay pay no attention to you know this is something that was built eons ago um, but you still need it you still need some sort of guidance for how to use this damn thing and how to get it spun up and what the additions are so and I haven't looked at bees with machine guns in like years like five six years the whole point of it is the whole point of me bringing this up is its documentation without this documentation this is a worthless project okay Luigi, what you're doing is building the inter internal documentation for your team. And that can't be, I, I can't underscore enough how important that is, particularly as this, as this project goes through iterations, which we already know, Tedjil's project is going through the second iteration already. So I would say to Tedjil, how is your documentation? Um, long story short though, um, I do believe that that um, documentation has a a worthy site. It's worthy. It's worthy of being mentioned in your portfolio as when you're talking about the project. Um, you know the fact that you've. You know one of the things that's so great about these projects is if you have good documentation, it's not hard to onboard new people. If you don't have good documentation, it's a nightmare onboarding new people because you've got to. You've got a hand-to-hand -hand combat, like every person coming in, and you know you just basically need this FAQ, where it's like, okay, well, how do I get this thing up and running? Oh, you do this. So, what, what, who, who is our, who is our customer? Oh, okay, here's the prototype, or here's our personas for that. Um, what is our, what, where's the, um, where's the stack ranking or the, the, the map of of what, what we're doing in the sprint. Oh, you go, you go here to see how we've broken out the dedicated tasks per sprint. So having that sorted out is key to a successful project. And Luigi, while, you're, while your team is beginning to pick up momentum, you have the elements in play for a successful project. So I'm really happy to see that. Um, Rebecca, you've got some questions this morning, um, which is great. When we uh, when we jump in here, you were trying. It says you try to bring the font down on the hero section for mobile, but did not have much luck. Um, yeah, I think I vaguely remember a screenshot. You said I'm going to submit this, so it's fine. Uh, you created a class for mobile and it added added it to the HTML and it broke everything. Um, so adjusting the font, this is probably something you don't need a class so much as you need, you need a media query. You know, like add a certain size, do this. Okay? So this is um, this is probably a point where we need to kind of streamline things. Like you've had these you've had these same, and I've had the same conversation with Tejal. At some point you need to kind of zoom out and say, okay, 
I got this case study, that case study, the other case study. How are they? How are they differing from one another? And then basically, you know, uh, do an audit. Like, okay, so what am I using? What am I using in the hero unit? And how can I make them streamlined so that they are all alike? Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this particular issue. Um, we'll talk about this code pen animation, and I'm going to go take a look at your first version of the Cellwise case study. Um, but let's go over here to VS Code. Yes, I've been I've been writing. Been it was a late night of writing. Um, oh, cancel. late evening of writing um we pushed up a lot of stuff yesterday with regard to um stakeholder interviews there is a new mini project coming um so the observation research and the stakeholder interviews for that have been have been moved today i'm going to be doing competitive research and analysis um it's um it's really exciting to get something that's not uh it's not fresh market into the mix um but that'll be waiting on um it'll be waiting on megan she'll be the uh, megan will will um be megan will get, be the first person through the ux program as it is set up for the ui program already so we've been kind of uh testing out how this is working with ui and now we're rolling it into ux um so i'm super excited about that here we're going to take a look at uh care point and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in, actually, I'm going to check my status to make sure I don't have a, oh boy, if I could just type, that'd be great. Okay, it's clean, so I'm going to pull. And, okay, so most of our work is here. Um, let's go ahead and, yep, 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 yep. So... This is the thing that we're looking at. Looks like you put P class intro. Let's see what we get. Okay, so that's care point. Inspect. Um, I'm not necessarily seeing Oh, I see mobile intro. Um, so you've got this class of intro. And if we say, okay, well, this is going to be 24. And that happens. Um, oh, sorry. 24 pixels. All right. So I'm just going to go in here for and look at this class intro. What I'm really interested in... Um, I'm, we'll, uh, actually, let's first unnote this. I just want to kind of see what you've got. Um, yeah, we'll just. Eh. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I want to come back over here and look at. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Um, is this all intro? Okay. So the question here is, like, when we come down, like, let's get in, let's get in a mobile view. Um, so here we are. Here we are in mobile, and this is all this is all pretty big, and it's all got intro on it. This all comes down to 24 in in mobile. I think that that's probably a a pretty good idea. Um, this one is still busted, and we need to fix the Silicandy. I, I believe this is a Silicandy logo issue. Um, yeah, I'm just going to put uh, full on this. Uh, no, full did not work there. So what's going on? Uh, with, yeah, you've got a, 
you know, width better say 100%. Now, now it's functioning. So, um, although there's now this weird like overlay thing that's happened. So I've got to put that in the X and see what occurs. Um, yeah, we'll have to look at how this overlay is made. It's like it doesn't go um, height display. Okay, so oh, the width. Wi uh, well, no. Hmm. Okay, so there's some sort of weirdness happening there, but. If we refresh, we'll see that the can the Silicon Candy logo is adding this. Uh, it's basically forcing this to be too wide, but that's that's not my big issue right now. I just want to go through and grab this intro class and let's um, let's get rid of mobile intro. You don't need it. Um, so mobile intro is gone. We're gonna go over to style. We're gonna look for intro file intro or class oh intro that's helpful so you've already got um yeah it's, it's actually already set up for you so what i would suggest doing is taking this down to 24 and then bumping it back up let's see where did it was it th th okay so you had 34 um so 34 24 here save it so at as we go to the desktop it's going to go up in size uh, let's refresh. Um, that doesn't feel like it went down. Did no, it did not go down. So, P class intro, save. Um, let's go to the home page. So I don't necessarily see why that wouldn't be. Oh, is it is it set up reversed again? Like max width, yeah. Okay. So min width at a minimum width of 768. Do that thing. So now we have care point, and when we come down. We have Okta, we come down, we have Silicandy, and it may seem to, like it's a little small. So why don't we say instead 26. That feels, that feels a little closer. Um, now let's go, while we're here, let's go look at that Silicandy logo. Um, Silicandy logo. Uh, Silicandy home logo. Blah, 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 blah. Um, all right. So, 30 view width. That, that's, it's like f giving it a forced size. I'd get rid of that. Let's just go with 100%. Um, this is also the full size. So like, if you go with just, if you just go with full, that'll do the same thing. So, my curiosity here is um, when I do this, yeah, you know, I'm, I want to simplify this. I know you have a, I know you have a class of full because we all, you know, yours is called full width. Okay, great. So let's, let's just grab that class and just use it instead of, you don't need, um, you know, my click shift home logo. You just need full width. Um, Silicandy home logo full width um, does the same thing now what the question is what happens when we get out of responsive um, close that down <laughs> okay 
Yeah, now that gets horsey. Okay. All right, Chris. Maybe maybe we should do this the other way. Cuz th there's a reason why you have it at that width. Um So, rather than Silly Candy, My Shift logo, um, okay, let's go with that. Let's go with what you, what you had, um, Yeah, was this just kind of running across previously? Let's go check out your, your site for comparison's sake. Uh, okay, so something happened here. really bizarre like what what's the difference um like this got darker and everything else what what a, oh okay so it got darker on mobile um is there a width that was being assigned uh, yo intro's got a width on it okay so that's interesting. And when I switched it around, so we just need to, okay. So now at a minimum width, there's a lot of things here that need to happen. So let's go ahead and pull over, you know, you had it go lighter instead of darker. And that's fine. You also had a min width applied to it. That's fine as well. Or, yeah, so intro doesn't go 100% full width above a certain size. So it, I just need to flip this stuff around. So yeah, there it's back. Oh, no, that's not you. This is you. And now it's back. That's good. That's good. That's what we like. Um, let's inspect element. Let's come down in size. So... The logo is still horsey. Um, let's look at let's look at that again. So Silly Candy Home logo. It got it got horsey on us, but we're going to fix that. So there's Silly Candy Home logo. All we really need to do here is I'm going to go the other way with the media query, but I'm going to apply it here. So kill. At a minimum, sorry, at a minimum width of 768, and make these things do that. Okay. Otherwise, um, Now, my trouble here is I, I, I think that this really needs to be like 500 pixels. So like for, for mobile, go full width and then everything above that adjust. So now, now it's going to move. And then once it gets up to a certain size, it locks in and just stair steps up. Um, but when you get down to mobile, it moves appropriately. So I think that that's the big thing that that you need to do and now it's now it's responsive um, so yeah uh, that takes care of that that takes care of the the type size thing um, if we hop over to care point and we look at this in terms of you know it will come up in size we'll go down in size um, yeah this this is now working so i think we've gotten that sorted out so let's take a look 
Um, we'll come back to that code pin thing in a second. I want to actually look at cell wise. Cell wise is a bit more important, I think. I think. Um, do, 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 do. And it just dawned on me. Like, my mic is working, right? Yes, it's working. Okay. I, I'm doing a lot of audio. Uh, do, I'm doing a lot of different things with audio, and it, it sometimes freaks me out uh, because I actually have two streaming uh, platforms that I'm using, one for Facebook, one for YouTube. Uh, here, we're obviously on YouTube. Um, I do, I'm using uh it's like personal streaming on the other thing. Um, and I sometimes freak out. Uh, did I remember to reset the, the audio levels? Um, it's your boy getting a little crazy with the audio. Um, all right, so let's take a look cell-wise. Um, I think we're over here. So I'm going to just let's, yeah, let's just hide the that column thing for a second. Um, I'm just kind of getting a sense of what's in here or what, what we're anti anticipating having in here. Um, so project overview, what you did, atmosphere, users, info architecture, sitemap, wireframes, animations, UX writing, what I learned. Okay. So I think it sounds like you've got most of the things in here. Um, this is the case study. So like I, I don't need to jump down. Um, I, I am interested in knowing if there is a, is there a prototype I can, you can link to? Is there a live site you can link to? Um, so there's that aspect of it that I'd want to have up here. Um, so I've been super, been very, I've started, I'm actually like throwing words in there. I'm very, I've been very interested in 5G for a while and now it's becoming a reality. Um, I was super excited to take on this project and be a part. That's incomplete. Um, so, Anytime you got like double commas, that's like a run on sentence. Um, uh, so I really think that this is, you know, um, uh, like I've been very interested in 5G technology for a while. Period. Now that it's, um, when the opportunity came along to participate in a 5G project, I was excited to be part of it. Um, period. So, like a couple of sentences there. Sentences there, not three commas. Uh, the challenge in this project was to um, the in. Um, The company Cellwise wants to create a great experience for its end user de uh, developers. Um, um, so, the company, uh, the client, uh, the client was Cellwise a. Um, a 5G platform who was targeting this experience at developers. The challenge was that they also wanted to um, make the make the company attractive to in potential investors and few uh, to potential investors. And I, I think I'd leave off future buyers because that is an investor. Um, um, like some investors just buy a hundred percent of it. Those who know me know that I live to make things simpler. I drop that. Um, it was, a. 
It was great to have a chance to edit and rewrite the content and microcopy for, the set for cell wise while creating wireframes for the site. Um, so the um, content is a large part of user experience and is a key t tool for building transparency in the business. Like uh, I dropped that, I, so I dropped this, I dropped that. Um, so I'd re, you know, split that up, rewrite this a bit, and then come down here. And it was a great, it was great to have the chance to edit and rewrite the content and microcopy for cell wise while creating the wireframes for the site. Um, so they're wanting to make you know they want to create a great experience while also reaching investors um, this provided an opportunity to edit and rewrite the content um, for sale wise while also creating wireframes for their site so I think I you know there I would make it a little shorter and I would rewrite the other bits of it. Um, so your roll, your deliverables, um, then we come down, project atmosphere, the agency I was hired by onboarded the client right before they, uh, oh, goodness, sorry, right before they, Right before they had to fly to Europe for a presentation, they had put put together a quick site based on the branding they did for them and their, and their initial discussion. They hired me at, at the stage of going back and planning the site. I was asked to meet with, meet with the client to understand their business, everything they needed for, need on the site, understand the target user, um, uh, maintain communication, uh, with clients, submit deliverables, wireframe the structure of the site, edit and write content and microcopy, prototype the wireframes, and submit the client. Um, I would say my tasks included these things because when you when you say I was asked to, that kind of pigeon like says, okay, here's the total scope of what I was supposed to do. When you say my tasks include it, that leaves some room to kind of talk about the, the, the glue that holds these things together. Um, and I think that, you know, regard, regardless of the project that you're working on, there's these glue moments. There's something around the project that actually makes the project work. And that, that often gets lost. When you, when you say, you know, this is what I was tasked, uh, my tasks included. Um, I think that that frames it a little, little differently. Um, I realized the client had a lot of preconceived ideas, what they wanted based on the work the agency showed them. Very heavy on animations. Client want their site to be over the top. The agency was representing me as an in-house designer, so I wanted the work uh, I did to be somewhat consistent with the other work the agency did. Um, studied sites and made and kind of drops off there. So um, let's just take a second and I, I want to kind of want to kind of look at this in terms of spacing. Um, like like this paragraph is is fine. Um, but the, the th I'm going to bust it apart real quick because I think that it, it just needs like a little bit of space in between. Um, and what's weird is I can't even see that here. But when you get down here, like just having a little bit of space between your paragraphs I think is going to help. When, when we undo that... this becomes frankly kind of hard to read. So whether it's 10, if it's five, like something 
to help us breathe, um, I think would be, I think it would be really beneficial to you. So keep that, keep that in mind. Um, I know this is all 18, but I, I, I just think that like, as you're going through this, you're going to want some space between. And I think that would, if you at, had space between, like you wouldn't need these, um, like huge paragraph spaces. I think you, you could just get away with like, okay, that, and that would be better. Although I do recognize that like that sort of thing begins to float through um, this, uh, but this is like an ordered list. So you can style that a little differently if you want it to. Um, but I'll get that back to where you were looking at. I s but I still think like there's, there's gotta be some adjustment of spacing to get us out of this zone, okay? Um, but again, I know that, you know, you haven't taken it into the main site, but just something to think of. Um, that and everything is like medium here. I think it becomes a little easier to read when it's just light. You know, light with some space, like with that, that becomes a lot better. Um, but I, I dislike like all of that space right there. So anyway, I, I, I digress. Um, but there is some like, it's clear you're still writing. There's like some areas where it just kind of drops off. Um, users, there are three users taking consideration. Um, it, I don't know, you're, you're not saying a lot about the user, like, you know, what were the, what were the goal, what were the pain points of these people? You know, you, you've identified who they are um, and really it's, it's like, there's two main camps. It's like outward, um, and I, well, no, there's, I guess there's, there's two types of outward that one's developers, one's investors, buyers. Um, but there's, there are people you want to onboard in terms of developers. And then there are like stakeholders like the decision makers and the investors and buyers. So I don't know, there are two camps, but it just kind of depends on, um, they're talking to people who want, who they want to build on their platform, but they're also talking to people who would they, who are very much the stakeholders in the company and they make the company decisions and they are the investors and the buyers. So it's a, it's a two way street, but th this isn't like, this is like two diagonal streets crossing, not, a street that moving the same in opposite directions of one another. Um, so wireframe, yeah, and you're you're just kind of getting into this. Um, on animations, I would encourage you to um, use like um, Loom or um, Loom or S Cloud App to to record these animations. Uh, so you can kind of show what the animation was. Um, I think that would be a, a benefit to have. And yeah, I, I think that, you know, once you, I, I would focus on making some adjustments to, up here, up top. Um, I would, I would flush this out a little bit. It, it feels really thin right now, as far as users go. Um, I'd record the animations. And I'm really, you know, I'm mostly curious about what you, what you learned. Um, I every time I every time I come upon a what I learned, uh, that that has the potential to like reorder the entire thing. And until I until I see what you learn and what you write there, um, I'm not sure the rest of this really has an order yet, because what you learn could be the could be the thing that kicks off the top. Don't know yet because it's not here. Okay. Uh, so I'd put, I'd put some focus on that. Uh, finally, I wanted to come back to, hey, hey, there's me. Um, <laughs> it's so funny because I, I, I struggle to look at the camera and then also look at the screen. Camera, screen. Um, but as we come back to this, um, yeah, this responsive uh, nav bar thing, pure CSS. So 
this is um, you know just a, like a bootstrappy style nav bar, but if you come over, it goes away. And you had a you had a couple of SVGs that you were gonna like flip out, and one of them was a hamburger, and the other one was an X. And I wanted to point out that that can be done right here. If you look at the HTML, there is a there is a menu button and a menu icon. And if we look at this right now, you'll see that it has an animation to it. But it isn't so much an animation as it is just lines that are being moved in CSS. So I want to focus on how that's occurring while also understanding exactly what's there. All right, so here's menu button um, and then menu um, icon. As we come down, you'll see that, you know, we have this hover state that's on, on these items, and that's fine. That's not my main concern here. The, um, you know, this is handling the max height transition. If I said it's going to be one second, and I changed it, see how much slower it lo uh, opens and closes. So that, that is handling the transition. Um, if we look down, this is all icon related. So cursor becomes a pointer. Um, as, you, as you get over it, um, the padding is 28 by 30. If we change this to 100, um, we kind of see how, how that adjusts itself. Um, so header, menu, icon, nav icon, um, display block, height, two pixels. Let's say that it's 20 pixels. Um, you know, so 20 pixels, suddenly our, our, our three bars have become a diamond. So what the hell is going on there? Well, it's because what this is really doing is this is drawing a line, okay? And then before and after that line, so nav icon, this class right here, that is just drawing a line. And if we uh, if we change this to red, you'll see that there's going to be just a, a line in the middle, okay? So this line is in the middle, and then before and after that line, they've drawn another line, okay? And if we change this, these to blue, uh, we'll change them to green because it's a little easier to see, I, I, I think. Um, so now those lines are green. You'll notice the red one, the red one disappears, okay? But the green one, the green ones stay and then they cross. So what's happening there? Um, well, if we come down, you'll see that the nav icon before and after start with a different top position, okay? So top here, if I said this top started at 20, all right, that's going to move down. If this one starts at 35, it's going to move down even further, and this, this gets even weirder, all right? So that before and after it matters you know before is starting five pixels above okay so if I said 10 it's gonna, well that moved in a direction I wasn't expecting um, oh I'm sorry this one before is moving five pixels below so it's saying okay move me five pixels below the red line so if I said 10 it's gonna predictably move and if I said negative 10 on the other one, this one should move up. All right, so that actually worked appropriately. Um, uh, stay on the page, thank you. Now if we come down, so we've got checked, and really the, the magic that happens here is right down here. So rotate negative 45 degrees. All right, so if I said rotate negative 90 degrees 
okay it becomes a it, and I could actually say rotate 90 degrees and instead of becoming an X this is going to be now become a plus actually uh, oh I know what it, I, yeah instead of instead of that Chris if I said ro don't rotate at all then it becomes a plus sometimes you have to get in here and just kind of mess around with the mess around with the code to see what it does but my whole point is is this animation is just CSS that's being moved around, all right? Um, and there's not a whole lot here to it. Like, that's literally it. Um, you know, trying to think of what else I could show you, but that's really the entire animation. And it kind of basically starts right here. So, it's a few lines of code. Uh, if you, you know, if you are curious about like how you could, uh, light left. If you're curious about how you can move this thing around and, and make it work for you, um, I'm super happy to talk further through it. But the big thing I want to do when you're going to end into any of these code pens is I want you to have the ability to kind of um, play around with the code, see what it's doing and kind of understand in your head like, okay, when I do X, I'm expecting something, this certain thing to happen. And if it doesn't happen, okay, well, what did it do and why did it do it? I don't want to just copy this code wholesale and put it into a project, okay? Not without, not without playing around with it and understanding what it's doing. But once you understand what it's doing, then you have some real, you have some real options. My, my big thing was when I saw you taking two SVGs and they're really just lines of, you know, do you know, you can draw that in CSS if you want it to. Okay. So, um, with that, I don't see anybody else in here today. So I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, so for, um, yeah, this is uh, what day is it? Is it Thursday? Yeah, it's Thursday. All right, everybody. We've almost successfully survived another week of the lockdown. So good job. And uh, without further ado, I'm Chris Courtney, New Pragmatic. I'll talk to you on um, Friday. Yeah, Friday.